السلام حياة قد جاء في القرآن أن السلام Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to iTrend on ITV. I'm your host, Sahira Bam Ismail. It's wonderful having you back in studio with us again this week. You know, it's such a wonderful time to be a South African. We have got remarkable intellectuals, ulama, teachers, spiritual teachers who are heading to our shores over the next two weeks. And we want to lap up and take as much information as we can get from all of them. Today, we are talking to two people who are uh, involved in two different projects but also to bring you remarkable intellectual stimulation, spiritual stimulation. My first guest in my show is Rukhshana Davids from Ritazi Events and Marketing, who is partnered up with Al Buruj Press to bring to our shores Yasmin Mujahid. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the studio. Wa alaikum as salam, Zahira and Jazakla, so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Rukhshana, you have been so busy. You have been, I've been seeing your name all over the place. You have been trying to coordinate a program that is going to be held in three parts of our country within these next few weeks yes it has been excellent actually stressful yes i'm sure <laughs> really it, it's been excellent you know uh, we've partnered with al baruch press who are bringing yasmin mujahi down to south africa but it's really been hectic but loving every minute of it alhamdulillah absolutely i have to ask you though what made you decide to get involved in it what called out to you what spoke to you that felt that this was something you wanted to take on you know i'm involved in a lot of events but this for me was a first because it's one of the most influential women of the world, of the Muslim world, coming to South Africa, to our shores. And I thought, you know what, I've got to jump at the opportunity because here it's, you know, I, I would love to meet Yasmin in person. I've met her last year when she was mm. here, uh, visiting South Africa, but couldn't really chat to her. Yes. And this is one opportunity that Al Baruj gave me to say, you know what, get involved and coordinate the whole event. And Alhamdulillah, with our partners in Durban and Cape Town, yes. we can all go or get the opportunity to meet her. Fantastic. You know, I think with a lot of people, we, you know, we look at it and we go, oh, it's an event and that, but there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes, a lot of intensive work, mm -hmm. months of preparation mm -hmm. that people often miss. How has that been for you in the build up to this event? It's been, like I said, it's been hectic. We've got an awesome team of volunteers, about um, 20 ladies who are working with me as a team to bring this together, as well as the Al Baruj press team is awesome. I mean, our Ustad Zaid from Al Baruj, who heads up Al Baruj, he just arrived in South Africa this morning and I must say the team has been so supportive for us because um you know, like you said, nobody knows what happens behind the scenes. Mm. You know, the, the stresses, the extra grays I'm Absolutely. getting. You know, but like I said, it's all just part and parcel of you know, the hype and the excitement and the, the, the build up to it, you know, and I said to the team this morning, I called them team awesome. And I said, you know, you guys are doing great and it's crunch time now. So Absolutely. it's like nerves and excitement and everything. So uh, it's, it's awesome, actually. Tell us about the three events that you have taking place. I know the first one is taking place this Saturday in Johannesburg. That's correct, yes. So it will be taking place this um, the 15th of July in Joburg, 16th of July in Durban, and the 22nd of July in Cape Town. So what she's going, yes, means going to be doing is having two workshops per day. So the first workshop is um, starts off at, at 10.30 in the morning up until 2.30. Okay. So that's like four hours that you have with Yasmin. The second workshop then starts at 5.30 p.m. after Maghrib, inshallah, until 9.30 the evening. So that's the same setup for Durban and for Cape Town. Okay, so that's wonderful. So people can get access to her basically at least twice in the day. So if you're not able to make a morning slot, you're able to make an afternoon slot as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Before we go into talking about what the topics are during the event, I'd like to tell our viewers that if you call in today, Rukshana has been exceptionally kind to us and we'll be giving away a ticket to the Johannesburg slot, the evening session, and it is valued at 370 Rand. It's from 5.30 until 9.30 at uh, the Palm Continental Hotel in Johannesburg this Saturday evening. All you've got to do is call in live into our studio and tell us why you'd like to have this ticket. And um, just to know, it, preferably if you are in the area, this ticket would be useful for you because we're not covering costs of anyone traveling. <laughs> not <yet>. at all, <laughs> no. So if you're in Johannesburg, please make a turn. Absolutely. Take us through what the workshops are going to be about. What can our viewers look forward to? Okay, so it's four hours of interaction with Ustada Yasmin, um, you know, from um, the first 
hour she gets on, on stage is a talk by her and then um, there's a break in between, there's another talk by her, there's a question and answer sh session, there's a live interview that we conduct with her, there's a book signing so she'll be selling her latest book at, um, at the event as well. Mm -hmm. So there'll be book signing and you know for us ladies that love taking selfies, there'll be selfie time, there's, there's so much interaction and so much jam packed in those four hours that when you leave there you'd say you know what I know yes mean I really had four hours hours of fun um, learning from the one of the most inf influential Muslim women and it's intensive four hours that have been absolutely into it. intensive because I think some of the ladies even asked are we gonna get a break to go um, buy coffee or something I said you know what you can you all buy coffee <laughs> but you you're gonna be so entertained as I call it for those four hours that you're not even gonna get time to go get coffee because if you do you're gonna miss out absolutely and I think that's the thing also with these talks is that although you it sounds like it's four hours you don't realize four hours passes like this because you're lapping up so much of information Absolutely. that the time just flies by mm. tell us what the topic is for Saturday morning okay so the Saturday morning topic is mending your past and Ustada Yasmin then goes into you know a lot of us have a past we have skeletons we have whatever's happened in our past so inshallah she's going into to try and get us to correct what we've done mm. and then give us the mindset to think a bit you know um, positive mm. and bring Quran and Sunnah in there and with all the talk she's going into it um, from the Islamic point of view Quran Sunnah how it can lift us up in mm. that way I mean there was this there's, there's some things that we've gone through in life that we read things in our Islamic books in quotes or whatever but we don't always it doesn't always hit home mm. but somehow when she brings it across she's just got this way of saying you know what it, it kind of resonates with you and it's like mm. I've, I've seen this quote I've seen this but why didn't it work you know for me and suddenly you're sitting here listening to her and it just works you know, it, it just, just hits makes home. sense yeah it just hits home mm. and I think that's the lovely part when you mentioned about um, when we were speaking a little off air as well we said very often it's things we know Mm. It's stuff that we would have read before. It's things that we say in conversation. Mm. But sometimes it's something you just want to hear again. You want it to resonate with you. And you mm. want to hear it from somebody who's practically been through a lot of it and mm. wants to hear, actually, you know what, I can also get there. It's actually mm. an easy way yes. to do it. And you know what's the beauty of this is, Ustana Yasmin is not, is not talking from, um, oh, you know what, I wrote a book and I'm just talking because I've read it in Quran and Sunnah and Islamic books or wherever. She's talking f about practical experience. She's been through life. She's been through whatever it is that I'm not allowed to mention, but Absolutely. you know what? Um, she's talking about experience. That is why she can talk from the heart. And her, her previous book, Reclaim Your Heart, is an international bestseller. Um, and there it touches your heart. Um, you know, you read that book and, and it's like she's speaking to you. I have to tell you with that book, I bought it at, uh, <coughs> sorry about that, at last year's marriage conference. Mm -hmm. And I took that book home with me. And I didn't end up reading it initially. It took me a while. And I always say mm -hmm. the books choose you at the right time. <laughs> True. And when I ended up reading it, it resonated so much with me because I felt like what she said made so much sense because many of us feel that you know we're not attached to things materialistically but with me the one weakness is we attach to people and she mm -hmm. spoke so much about that and she spoke about our attachments to people being still an attachment to things in this world mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how to, to actually work through that and it resonated very strongly mm -hmm. with me and I love reading it and so I know sitting and listening to her almost is in the same so if you get the mm -hmm. opportunity go go and listen to her go and learn from her because the wealth of wisdom that you will receive from that it's just priceless it really is absolutely yes. and I think Rukshana let's just talk a little bit about mending your past when mm -hmm. we talk about that topic I think you know ladies often forget or even men when people are listening to this how much people go through in their lives mm -hmm. and the one thing during one of the talks that I gave somebody said I wish I could tell myself to just forgive myself and I think so we true. never ever do that. We, we never don't. forgive ourselves mm -hmm. in order to be able mm -hmm. to move forward. And yes. perhaps this gives you the tools to be able to mm -hmm. mend it and to work mm -hmm. forward. Inshallah. And as women, I mean, like you said, we've been through a lot myself. I've been through a divorce and all that. And, um, you know, like you said, she gives us those tools because we're so hard on ourselves, you know, as women. And we just, we, all, we critic ourselves yes. at some point and, and then we find ourselves down and out and thinking how you're going to pick yourself up and then along comes someone like Ustana Yasmin and she just puts that right word at the right time and you think wow you know I shouldn't attach to people I shouldn't attach to dunya and you know kind of lift me up and you know it, it takes you forward and like love and happiness also she talks about how we 
often as women, mm -hmm. we look at love as this, you know, destination. We're going to find that love and we do everything in this world to get to that love. And once you get it, it's almost like a destination. And then what do you do when you, when you get married? What do you actually, how do you conduct yourself? You know, how, how does your mindset need to be? And she goes deep into those things with her wisdom. It just makes you think about it from a different angle. Absolutely. And you get mm -hmm. to look at it from a different point of view as well, because mm -hmm. like you mentioned, it's actually an easy way to mm -hmm. reach out. It's an easy way and it's a practical way and it's not far off for anyone. Everyone often says, you know, but it's not so simple. It's not so easy to do. Actually, it is. It as Roshana has just mentioned, she will give you those tools. She'll be able to talk to you about how to reach it. And when you're sitting and listening to Roshana talking, she talks with such passion that I'm <laughs> loving listening to her and I'm wondering when her book's coming out. It's wonderful because you can see that you believe so much in what you're saying, which is why I understand why you've partnered in this project as well. It's Absolutely. fantastic to listen Absolutely. to I think you. if you've been through life, you realize, you know what, you got to, and as women, we got to lift each other up. So Absolutely. when you see somebody, I call Yasmin the Mufti Mink of the female <laughs> world, you know, because like Mufti Mink and her, they just know what to say. And um, as women, we need to lift each other up. Absolutely. Going through life, it's no use you vying for that top position or doing whatever. You need to work together as a team. And, and I must say, that is why our team in Joburg is so su successful, Alhamdulillah, because we're just such an awesome team that work together to bring about the success of the event, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. So going from Team Awesome, we have to take some awesome ad breaks. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation with Rukshana Davids to find out what's happening further in the programs for Yasmin Mujahid. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back after that break. We are chatting to Rukshana Davids from Ritazi Events and Marketing who has partnered with Al Baruj Press to bring Yasmin Majai to the Johannesburg shores. Yasmin's tour does not only stop in Johannesburg but continues to Durban and to Cape Town. If you've been tuned in earlier, you would have heard about the passion involved in this project, what messages are coming across. We're going to explore that a little bit further in terms of what we can look forward to hearing on Saturday. But as we mentioned, we have one ticket available to give away to the event in Johannesburg, the evening event. All you've got to do is call into our producers now. Uh, the number is on the screen or will be showing on the screen and you can call in and our producers will take your name and details and we will give you one ticket uh, and that's been sponsored by Rukshana so a huge <laughs> yes. thank you from all of us as Afon, well. Afon. Rukshana we spoke about the first segment right mm -hmm. and then I know there's a four hour and then a little bit of a break which is not really much of a break for the no. team or Yasmin because there's mm -hmm. quite a few things uh, set up in between press conferences and that tell us a little bit about the evening schedule. Okay so the evening is also another special one it's called Love and Happiness and where she is going to um, promote her book so she'll actually be promoting a book in all the sessions and mm -hmm. selling a book at the event and um, the book will go for uh, 20 pounds is about 370 if you yes. equate it to the rand so her second session about love and happiness is talking just exactly about what it is love and happiness where do we find our love where do we place our happiness what makes us happy is it something on the earth or in the dunya is it something that we're striving for in the akhirah so she's going to be concentrating a lot on how we as women, as, as, as mostly women, attach ourselves to the dunya and how, in which things we find love, in which things actually make us happy. Should mm. we really look at a person to bring happiness or where do our love and happiness lie in Allah? So. And it's about fine-tuning that because I think very often along the way we do blur those lines. We do think, mm. oh, if I get this or if I'm with this person or if I have my children at this age, that will bring me happiness. And then mm. we get to that point and then we realize, okay, that's not quite where I need to be. Exactly. I need more or mm. I need something mm. else. And I, what I love about this topic is that it will teach you how to be directed in terms of making your focus only being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, no, I agree. Because um, how often have we said, you know, like you said, we're looking for love and happiness in things, in people, in whatever situations, and then you get there and it's, it's like Yasmin says, you get to a destination. What now? Then it's, that's the time where you actually feel, wow, now I'm becoming depressed because I looked for love in a person, I mm -hmm. found it, what now? I looked for love in having a child, I love my children, yes, but what, and then what now? now? Life happens. And if you are not attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're not attached to sunnah, if you're not attached to, if you're attached to worldly stuff, mm. you're going to get to that destination and you're going to feel, you know what, I don't know where to go. Because What's my next will be thing? Lacking. Yes, what is my next love? What is my next happiness? And that is when our hearts become attached to the dunya, mm. to people and to things. And I think Yasmin is going to concentrate a lot on 
trying to get our hearts lifted and only attach it to Allah, inshallah. And she's got a wonderful way of doing that. She's she got a, a really remarkable mm. way of being able to pull you through that, to be mm. able to let you reach different levels. And almost, I don't think, the one thing what I love about these speakers is it's not about preaching to you, oh, you have to do A, B, C, D, and that's how you're going to get this. It's about saying to you, this has worked for me. This is what I uh, am advising. This is a lovely way to go about it. And you take from there what you want and mm. what works for you and you walk that mm. journey. But it's almost like a toolkit. Yes. And you yes. choose which tools work mm. for you along the way. Exactly. And like I said, Yasmin has been through it. So mm. she can speak from the heart. She, say, she says in a book, she's been through it. She's been through life. So she can give us practical advice. And that for me, it's just authentic. kind of, you know, it, it, it kind of works for me. Because if you're sitting in a nice little corner and you haven't been through life, you haven't been through heart, take or misery and I think we all have yeah but you know then you can really you you speak from a point of reference really and the one thing that I must note also is that um, the way Roshana said it about everybody going through pain and going through heartache the one thing I've come across with everybody that I've spoken to everyone goes through something mm -hmm. and it, Allah will give you only what you can be but the level of pain that you feel regardless of the circumstances or situation may be the same as somebody who's been through something that looks more severe but the level of pain that you feel will be the same and i think what's mm -hmm. lovely about these talks is they're addressing that and they're dealing with that and dealing with being able to accept that as part of our lives absolutely yes and um like you said different people can resonate it can resonate what she says can resonate with you in a diff in a different way and she, like i said she's been through it she knows what she's talking about and what i like about it is she doesn't preach it. Absolutely. She doesn't preach and say you must do that. Quran says this and Sunnah says that and this is haram and this is halal. You know, it's not about that. We women are funny creatures. You know, <laughs> we often need to hear, you know what, we need to have that soft heart, That's that compassion, it. that, you know, saying to you, you know, it's going to be fine. You'll you know, okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in the Quran, so let, let us do it together. Let's try this. Let's, you know, if we implement the Sunnah, this will change in your life and you do it once, twice, three times, four times, then you realize, wow, there's a change happening in my life. You know, and, and I think Ustad Yasmin even said something, um, a quote, she loves social media and sending quotes off and she said something of poison doesn't leave all in one go it leaves bit by bit but eventually it'll be out of your system I like that I really like the way that is said because I think you know we always often lose hope and I, mm -hmm. what you said now almost gives you hope that it's not the end just keep trying just yes, make a little yes. bit of an effort every day and some somewhere along the line it'll make get better of course yes and and i must say sugar to allah for putting people like that in our lives people like you i was people just about like to say people like you <laughs> because i'm loving listening to you you speak with so much of uh, this calmness around you and, and i said to her off air she's got such a beautiful aura about her mashallah it's really <laughs> wonderful to hear her speak and if this is the, the face of what's coming uh, in Johannesburg, I promise you, you are in for an absolute treat because sitting in Rukshana's presence alone is absolutely calming, mashallah. Oh, Rukshana, this is what we've got in, uh, in a store for people in Johannesburg. And I'm sure for people that are driving to Johannesburg this weekend, you will be in for an absolute treat. Tell us what's happening in Durban on Sunday. Okay, Durban is exactly this, the same two workshops. And again, it's mending your past and, and um, love and happiness. And like I said, throughout the um, events, she'll be selling her book. Okay. So again, she's going to be um, doing the exactly, exact, exact same thing in Durban, inshallah. And what's wonderful about this book is this is one of the new books that have just been launched. Mm -hmm. It's something we mm -hmm. haven't seen on our shelves yet. So it's a wonderful way to get access to it, to get your book signed, and to speak to the author directly as well. Yes, and also, just on that, she will be bringing her new book to um, South Africa, Love and Happiness. She will also bring Reclaim Your Heart, but she's added four chapters to it, oh, four fantastic. new chapters. So um, I haven't seen it myself, and I'm looking forward to reading it. So she'll be selling that book as well. Fantastic. And then, uh, obviously, you've got a little bit of a break, and then you're heading off to Cape Town. So yes. let us know what's in store okay, for Cape Town. Okay, so she, inshallah, goes to Cape Town on Monday morning. And um, because she was in Johannesburg last year, she didn't have much time to travel. Yes. So I think Cape Town appeals to anybody, that Absolutely. beautiful mountain. Absolutely. So um, she's going to Cape Town, inshallah, next week to explore Cape Town and with her family and spend some time there. And then Cape Town's event is on the 22nd of July. And what is so amazing about Cape Town is the second event of the evening is totally sold out. There is not a ticket inside, alhamdulillah, for that. Because I think um, Cape Town is 80% Muslim, but also, I mean, you know, the people are very, very passionate about the Islamic speakers, about yes. lecturers and all that, and they support them so well. Not that Joburg and Durban doesn't, but we've just got such a big um, community in Cape Town, a Muslim community, and, That's you know, and when they heard Yasmin coming, I think before the, uh, it even went live on Facebook or anything, 
you know, the tickets are already it's flying. Where can we get tickets? You know, people are on board. So I think Cape Town really well done to the I'm guys in Cape Town. Them. But hopefully there's still be tickets for the morning event in Cape Town. Yes, so people, our is, viewers in Cape is. Town can still get in touch and get a chance to Absolutely, see her. Absolutely, yes. Nadia Jacobs sell, sells tickets in Cape Town. She heads up the team in Cape Town. Anissa Essek, um, um, she heads up the team in Durban. So there are still morning tickets in Cape Town and there are tickets in Durban for both the morning and the evening as well. So that brings us to our next thing. For our viewers here who want to get in touch, who are saying, oh, you know what, I actually, I need to go, I need to learn something, I need to actually just be in this presence. How do they contact you for tickets? How do they contact Anissa or Nadia? Okay, we've got the um, numbers. So what we can do is, I think we've actually ran the, um, ran the um, advert on ITV the whole week already. Okay. So our names and our numbers are on there. Myself for Johannesburg, you can contact me on 76 9777 It's all over social media and all the adverts. Mm -hmm as well as Nadia Jacobs in Cape Town and Anissa Essek in Durban. Again, um, ITV has run that um, advert, so the numbers are on there. Perfect. So if, and also if you have missed the advert by any chance, you can call through to the ITV offices and they will give you the details. Or Rukshana has also given her cell phone number, which we will also uh, repeat before the end of the show. Sure. Or you can contact her. I know her, she is very active on her social media pages, on her Facebook page. All the information is there as well. Yes, um, on my um, company Facebook page, Ritazi Events and Marketing as well as myself, um, Shana Davids, and any of my team members. You'll see me sharing it constantly. So now I have to ask you before we end the session, what has it been like working with this awesome team, being able to almost manage a team of ladies, mm -hmm. being able to put things together with everybody who's got the same vision at the end to just mm -hmm. make this a successful event? I think, you know what, um, we share the same vision and the goals. We're not there to outdo each other and I want this and I want... It's a matter of working together. We had absolutely wonderful teamwork with the team. The ladies are always supporting each other. Just this morning, this one's looking for tickets and that one, and okay, let's get from here, let's get from there. We're posting in the group, and we're sharing so much love and compassion for this um, um, goal, you know. We want to see this a, a success, and with anything, like, it's teamwork. It's not one person doing it. It's not me. It's not Saifullah from Al Baruj or Zaid. It's, it's us as a team getting together and sh having respect, firstly. And we are all leaders in our own right. So as leaders, we help each other and move forward. And inshallah. that is, I think, the pinnacle of success for me is when there's effective teamwork, when everybody's got the same vision and it's not about any individual, then you know you're, you're hitting the right nail. Absolutely. I agree with you. And Great. I want to say yes. on TV today, shukran team. You guys are awesome. Jazakallah to Al Baruj and Jazakallah to my team. You guys are great. Alhamdulillah. Rukshana, before we close up, we're almost at the end now. What is the one thing you want viewers to take back from this event? I mean, you can chat to them and tell them why mm -hmm. they need to attend your event and uh, what they're going to be taking back. Okay, viewers, you got to come see this, uh, this event. It's not, for me, it's life changing. I've seen Yasmin for about half an hour last year uh, at the marriage conference in Santon. And you know what? Listening to her live is different to listening to her on YouTube. I sat there, I sat in the second row from the front, even though I was working at the mm -hmm. event. But you know what? She just, I don't know, you sat there and you listened to her and she just, it captures you. She captures your heart. You listen to it and you think, but I didn't think of this or that or doing this. And you think of your own issues in your life, your own issues that your friends are going through, your own issues that your family is going through. And you think to yourself, you know what? She just said something that touched me and I'm going to try and implement it. You might not, you know, some people mm. say to me, you know what? You people mustn't idolize or we're not idolizing. It's not her. about, yes. It's about celebrating these wonderful Muslim lecturers and ustadas and ustads that's always coming to our shores and sharing the awesome um, learnings and wisdom that we need. I mean, in the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to go and, and it's not a preach, it's about teaching people that's to it. go through life and helping and supporting each other. Absolutely. Rukshana, I think we must reiterate that point because I've seen that come up on social media very often. And I think Rukshana has really made good mention of it, is that this is not about idolizing people. We are not idolizing anyone. The role models that our kids currently have in society are not people that we would want in our kids' mm -hmm. lives. The mm -hmm. Western media, what we're seeing out there, we want to see role models that are showing us the lifestyles and the lives of Hazrat Khadija, Hazrat Fatima, Hazrat Aisha. Those are the role models we want. And what we're doing by bringing in scholars like this, by attending these workshops, is we're saying, let's learn from you how we can get closer to that path. So in no way is this a form of idolizing at all. Mm -hmm. It's just a form of saying, you know, we respectfully want to be in in this company to be able to get to a closer path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely. Rukshana, your cell phone number before we leave. My number is 076 011 9777. 
Alhamdulillah. We, you can contact Rukshana directly for any tickets. Don't forget, we are giving one ticket away. All you've got to do is contact our producer with your name and details, and you could win one ticket towards the Johannesburg slot for the evening segment. We look forward to seeing you there. Rukshana, shukran so much for joining us on air. I wish you and your awesome team an absolutely successful week ahead. Shukran so much. Shukran for having me. It's and an absolute I look pleasure. forward to seeing you there on Saturday, inshallah. inshallah. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to be speaking to another fantastic lady who's taking us on another journey. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to iTrend on ITV. Congratulations to Yasar Strachan from Florida. Thank you for calling in. You've been chosen as the winner of the Yasmin Mujahid ticket uh, to the evening event in Johannesburg. Uh, Rukshana Davids will be in touch with you. Your details have been sent to her and you will receive your complimentary ticket. Congratulations to you. We hope you enjoy the event. In the studio with me now is the wonderful coordinate, one of the wonderful coordinators of the Muslim Our Lifestyle event, Tisni Mohammed. This is taking place in conjunction with the marriage conference next Saturday, the 22nd of July at Santon Convention Center. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the studio, Tisni. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much for having me. I have seen you ladies put in copious amounts of hours, time, effort, the consistent WhatsApp messages. Mm -hmm. You have been doing so amazingly well. What has it been like building up to this event? It's been an absolute roller coaster, yeah. amazing experience. We've had the opportunity to engage with such phenomenal women from various aspects and walks of life. And as tiring and exhausting as it has been, it's just been such a rewarding and enriching experience at the same Alhamdulillah. time. I want to just take our viewers through mm -hmm. what is happening for that uh, day, and then we'll focus a little bit more about the Muslim Our Lifestyle event on its own. Uh, but we've got the marriage conference running throughout the entire day, and this has been bringing international speakers, ulama like you, uh, of credible note uh, to our shores. We have Shah Umar, mm -hmm. we've got Shah Yahya, we've got local and international speakers that'll be there. Absolutely. And that'll be running through the day. There's an expo that will be running through the day as well. So people can go through, go and have a look at things. There's kids events, uh, a kids program that's going on. Yes. Uh, then we've got uh, the Muslim Our Lifestyle event, which will be taking place, which we'll be chatting to Tisneem a little bit more about. And then we've got the Ilm Arts Festival, which will be taking place in the evening. So this is a lot that's happening. I mean, you are spoiled for choice coming to this event. Absolutely. And I think there has been some confusion in terms of, um, you know, everybody was aware of the Muslim conference and now the Muslim lifestyle fair. So I think maybe just for clarification purposes to explain mm. that on the back of the phenomenal success of last year's International Marriage Conference, um, there were people from all walks of life um, mm. that joined that particular setting. And then the realization dawned that it was a phenomenal opportunity to showcase the Muslim lifestyle at a broader level. So that was the reasoning behind creating a full jam-packed one-day event which allows people at every age, at every level, from all different walks of life to embrace um, Islam at all different levels. So whilst the marriage conference is core to the programming component, there are other aspects which looks at youth. So there's a youth mm. zone and it's an opportunity to connect with a generation that most parents feel disconnected with, Absolutely. a platform to engage with them, to find out what they're thinking, to showcase their talent and to reconnect and get to understand them as well as their needs and challenges. I think, I think you've yes. summed it up so nicely because that was the one thing that stood out for me last year is that it wasn't just about marriage. Yes, it was about how to make your marriage better, how to get into marriages, how to deal with issues in your marriages, how to have good, healthy relationships in your marriages. But it was also about focusing on your relationships with your parents, relationships with your children, relationships with community members. It was about mm -hmm. having a Muslim lifestyle. And that's what I loved about it is that it wasn't just for people who were married. And I think many people missed that last year where they thought, oh, it was only if you are married or if you're going to be getting married or if you have problems in your marriage, should you be attending? And the conference was mm -hmm. nothing like that. It was about for every single person. And what I loved at the end of that day was just seeing how many people had attended. And I think that's why this year it's come about where there's a focus on saying, well, actually, we've answered your questions. We are giving you exactly 
everything that you want. Absolutely. And if I could sum it up, I'd call it a learning and spiritual journey. I love that. And it's open to people of all ages. And when you walk away, you walk away with a wealth of knowledge, with practical tools, but a spiritual enlightenment. And it Absolutely. reinvigors your faith and your belief in Allah and the deen itself. So That's such a beautiful way of looking at it. And I love how you summed it up. I think those two words are so key to what people can expect when they arrive to this event. Absolutely. Tell us about your event. Uh, next week on our show, people will be able to be in touch and we will be speaking to other people from the marriage conference and speaking to Uncle Idris and Sajid and taking what the marriage conference is about. Before we, sorry, before we go into that, I just want to let our viewers know that FNB, uh, the CEO of FNB Islamic Banking, Mr. Aman Mohammed, has given us 10 500 Rand tickets that we will be giving away to five lucky callers. So we'll give five lucky callers two tickets each to attend the marriage conference next week, Saturday. All you have to do is call into our producer who will either put you live on air or who will take your details down. And the first five callers this week will win uh, two tickets each. It is neat. Now, we've discussed the marriage conference itself, mm -hmm. the souk that's taking place. We've got the Ilam Arts Festival, the kids event. Now we've got this much anticipated Muslim Al lifestyle event. And that has been getting so much of credibility on social media. I mean, every page I open up has got something about Muslim Al lifestyle event. And okay. tell me about that event itself. Okay, so the Muslim Lifestyle event is about putting women at the top of the agenda through a change and an agenda that's driven by women themselves. It looks at pertinent issues and challenges that we face. It looks at, you know, the, the question of inner beauty and ex external beauty as an extension of inner beauty. So it's a jam-packed segment with phenomenal women from different walks of life and some of the amazing speakers, international speakers from the actual marriage conference conference that will be mm. part of the setting as well. So there's different components to this particular event. The first one is a dynamic panel which uh, talks about the woman next door. Mm. Now as we know um, there's lots of stereotypes which are assigned to women from mm. that find themselves in different situations within society. So and a lot of those stereotypes and judgments are actually um, reinforced by us as women yes, ourselves. Absolutely. So the way we perceive the divorcee, the way we perceive the widower, the way we perceived um, mm. the abused um, uh, woman, uh, the way we perceive a working woman that has children at home. And this particular segment is about giving phenomenal women the stage in terms about sharing their life journeys, their experiences, the challenges that they face. And despite all of that, how they use their faith to overcome the challenges that they face and it allows us an opportunity to, to dispel a lot of those myths and it basically reawakens our calling as Muslims to actually knock on the door and find out who is the woman next door. I actually got good spumps listening to you speak about that because it hit so hard for me because very often you're right we as women yes. reinforce those stereotypes whether we do it uh, knowingly or unknowingly uh, we do reinforce it we do see things in a different light and what i love about what you're doing is you're going hard at it you're saying this is it and we're building a sisterhood absolutely. rather than saying oh well it's not me it's someone else so let's uh, that happens to them absolutely and i mean these are women that live the stereotypical life from our perspective in terms of what a normal muslima's life looks like and they came across challenges and obstacles which changed the course of their future trajectory and life plan. And it can happen to any one of us. It can happen to us, it could happen to our daughters. It. And it's about empowering ourselves to look beyond the external and to truly connect with each other and support each other. Because in essence, that is what Unified Ummah is about. It's uh -huh. about being able to engage and to understand people and to dialogue and get to see them for who they actually are. And seeing the human humanity in each person Absolutely. again. But hats off to those speakers that you've got that are coming that are willing to sit on that platform Absolutely. and put so much of themselves out there in order for others to benefit from it. Absolutely and that's another you know, important learning that we can take away from this, that it, despite your challenges, and we, you know, as a society, we have a tendency to cover up the challenges or difficulties that we go through, but they were put in our path 
for us mm. to be able to share, to support each other in that particular process, to prevent a po another person from having to go through the same thing. Mm. So there's so much learning that can be taken out of people that who are willing to share their experiences and being open, honest, and transparent about it. Not from the perspective of, you know, uh, naming, blaming, and shaming, Absolutely. but from the perspective of, Yes, we all go through difficulties and challenges. This was my experience, but this is how I overcame it. And what I absolutely love about that is none of those women are sitting on a platform saying, I want your pity or your sympathy, but they are actually saying, I'll give you strength based on what I've been through. Absolutely. So, I mean, that panel, you're going to be absolutely blown away by the phenomenal women, their stories, their journeys of victory despite such uh -huh. tremendous challenges and hardship. Fantastic. I love that. It's stories of victory and that's what we need to focus on. That's what sisterhood is. We're going to be taking a very short break and when we get back, we're going to continue about what else the Muslim Our Lifestyle event has to offer to us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to our show iTrend on ITV. I'm your host Sahira Bam Isma and we are chatting to Tisni Muhammad who is part of the Muslim Our Lifestyle event at the Muslim for event that's taking place next Saturday the 22nd uh, in Santon. Our phones have been going absolutely crazy. I think our producer has already chosen five lucky winners who will be getting two tickets each at 500 Rand e per ticket to the uh, event next week. So congratulations to all of you. We will contact you and we'll give you the details. Tickets have to be collected at the FNB offices in Rosebank, but we will contact you to give you those details as well. But as you saw on the ad break, you can also win tickets from ITV itself by SMSing in your details. There's many, many opportunities to make sure that you get there. And we look forward to seeing each of you there. Tisneem, we chatting about women who are coming through, who are sharing their stories at this mm -hmm. platform. What happens after that? Um, so actually, there's an exciting opportunity to launch a bigger version. So on the day that will be shared, and at the moment we want to keep it well, keep in it, suspense. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, going forward, there's going to be lots of opportunities for women to further engage, smaller mastery workshops that look at specific issues that we face as women. Um, what I love about that is you're almost saying to women, we're giving you these stories. We're giving you stories of victory, stories of strength, but we're not leaving you alone. Absolutely. We're will give you backup support no matter what journey you have to walk on. Absolutely. What else do our viewers that are going to be attending mm -hmm. this event? I know the one thing I have to say to all of you is even though there are a thousand seats in this venue to be here, you are not guaranteed a seat because it's the first thousand that walk into the door that are going to be able to get a seat to be seated here and we're listening to all of this. Yeah, and that's why we recommended pre-registration on the website. So for all ticket holders to actually log on to the Marriage Conference website and pre-register due to the limited seating capacity. Absolutely, because yes. I think many, many women are going to want to be a part of this and want to be in this segment. Because And what's the nice thing is that it's during the lunch break where they've made sure you've got access to this without missing too much of anything else. Absolutely. Through the day, after this segment, mm -hmm. what do you then have? So the next component is called Mira Mira. And, uh, you know, that speaks to our feminine desire to project beauty. But more importantly, we turn the narrative around in terms of, you know, the internalization of beauty and how that is externalized. So there's different components to this particular segment. Um, the one looks at, you know, modest weight uh, trends. So it's for the aspiring modest dress mm. or the aspirant hijabi. Not all of us are on the same journey. Yes. So not all of us are in full hijab. Not all of us are in full niqab. We're all on a journey towards a line. It's about encouraging women to take that step towards modesty. Um, modest wear has blown off internationally. It's such an incredible um, platform. And it's about showcasing uh, women in that particular space that are doing phenomenal things locally and giving Muslims the opportunity to take that next step in terms of how can I still be trendy and not lose my femininity but at the same time embrace this journey of modesty. What I love about that, and I have to say I've met a few of the ladies that are going to be involved in that segment, mm -hmm. is you have really tapped into local talent. And I love the fact that you are saying, here's phenomenal women in our communities that we are going to be showcasing and that we are going to be celebrating. And that for me stood out as such a strong part of sisterhood because it was literally, it's a woman supporting women, pushing women for the benefit of other women. 
Absolutely, we've got a wealth of uh, phenomenal talent in this country and it's about tapping into that, supporting each other, encouraging each other, um, critiquing each other from a positive perspective so that we can all grow, learn and develop from this experience as well. So that's, you know, the ethos behind everything that we do is developmentally focused and supporting each other on this particular journey. And Disneen, you also mentioned about um, modest dressing and mm -hmm. I love the fact that you have included that because it is a big part of who we are as women whether we are in uh, wearing hijab whether we're not wearing hijab whether we are in niqab in abaya whatever it is every woman has a need to want to look presentable want to look and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said something about beauty being an integral part of who we are and uh, I love the fact that you have included that and it mm -hmm. is going to appeal to many young ladies that are uh, wanting to go into hijab wanting to do more modest dressing and saying to them here are fabulous examples of role models in our community and we can pick up from that and learn and move Abs forward absolutely and like I said earlier everyone's not at the same level we're not in the same place and it's about making it accessible and not um, you know, discarding anyone from that process, but bringing everyone on this particular journey, encouraging each other to take that next step. Absolutely. Yes. After Mirror Mirror, Okay. What's the next segment? Okay, so just before we move on to the next segment, also part of Mirror Mirror includes a travel segment. So we talk ah. about beauty, but we look at it from the perspective of travel and exploring nature and the beauty that Allah has given us. I love that. Absolutely, and the spiritual dimension of travel. And as a Muslim, what hacks, you know, they are available to plan um, holidays for your family that, you know, uh, are appropriate um, the, the, a niche for a Muslim fantastic. family because it's very practical examples as well that are coming in uh, through the segment absolutely so we've got a phenomenal um, the only female editor of a major um, newspaper magazine travel section that will be hosting wow. that particular segment fantastic yes. I'm very I'm yes. looking very very forward to that yes and you, sorry you said after Miramura segment what do we have on then Okay, so after the Mirror Mirror segment, we move into the language of love. And there's two dimensions that we look at there. So the one dimension is food as an expression of love. Yes. And we've turned it on its head again, because again, the societal stereotype is that a way to a man's heart is through food. But we say, well, that's a way to a woman's heart as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, there we engage with two phenomenal bloggers in the foodie space who will be sharing their journey. And it's not just about their passion for love, but also the behind the scenes, so behind the glamour, behind the beautiful pictures, the realities of social media and, you know, bringing your originality, your authenticity to that particular space and how that can drive your success. So it's, you know, it's deeper than just the food aspect, but that's going to be a power packed fun I session as it. well. And I love the fact that you've brought so much into it, but it's mm -hmm. not in a normal way. It's, it's like, for example, the language of love, but it's chatting to social media bloggers, it's chatting to foodies, it's talking about the love of everything around us. And it's not the way people would usually interpret that topic. So I think that's a wonderful way to look at it. And I think our, the people that are attending it are in for an absolute treat because I also know some of the people who are speaking at that event and they are Phenomenal. fabulous. <laughs> they are, every time you're in their presence, there's a spirituality that Absolutely. comes out in what they speak about because Absolutely. they're so passionate about it. And also because they're so authentic and original. Absolutely. So it's, yeah, we're all looking forward to it. What has stood out for me so strongly, I must say mm -hmm. to you, is your team. The mm -hmm. four of you that have put together this event because it's been done so selflessly. And I have to commend them because this was a group of ladies that were asked to do this event who could have very easily have put themselves in the forefront and said, it's about us and we'll be doing it but mm. chose to actually coordinate and put in, include number of sisters in our community and say we will share the platform with everybody. And that's not something you see on a regular basis. And for me, I was blown away by that because it was so selflessly done. And I think that's what makes your entire event already such a success. And inshallah, it's something that we hope to grow. And like I said, it's based on a desire to build a sisterhood, to connect, to engage with each other, to support each other. And the only way we can do that is if we, 
we, we try and do individually the little that we can. Alhamdulillah, and I think you've done that so well. I think our viewers are going to have so much to look forward to then. So as we mentioned, you have got the marriage conference, which happens all day. You have got the kids uh, section. You've got, I'm sorry, I even missed out a few. There's youth programs. <laughs> there's soul seekers. Uh, there is the souk, uh, which is the expo that goes throughout the day. We have got Ilam Arts Festival. And then obviously in the middle of the day, we have got the Muslim Our Lifestyle event. Tasneem, are there any final words you'd like to say to the viewers or to the audience as to why they should come through and be a part of this section of the event or of the event as a whole? The wealth in terms of intellectual knowledge, in terms of spiritual um, you know, prowess, in terms of passion that will be found in one room is absolutely phenomenal. So it's an opportunity to engage with phenomenal women doing incredible things and an, and an opportunity to connect with each other, to learn different tools, um, to see things from a different perspective and to be part of ultimately a bigger vision. And that is creating a unified force amongst our sisters so that we can better support, serve each other and um, do that collectively with the aim of pleasing our creator. Alhamdulillah, I wish you and your team all the best for the event ahead and we're looking very very forward to being a, a huge part of that thank you so much it has I promise you this is an event you definitely don't want to miss these women are absolutely remarkable their event is not something separate from the marriage conference it's part of it so your ticket that you purchase allows you access into the event as well but as Disney mentioned because they are limited seats please pre-register so that you are not disappointed when you get to the door and it is full. There's only so much that they can accommodate for. This is about building true sisterhood as well. This is what uh, building people around us, uh, motivating and showcasing phenomenal local talent as well as international talent. Thank you so much to FNB, to Aman Mohammed for uh, giving us the uh, tickets. They have been allocated. I know our phones have been going crazy. We will SMS you if you have been uh, chosen as one of the winners of the 500 Rand tickets that we will be giving away to next week's event. Shukran so much for joining us on air. Stay tuned next week when we will be exploring and discussing with more of the speakers from the marriage conference. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.